Ah, luck, like a casserole. What is your casserole you're bringing to the potluck of parish life? What is your sense of God? And there's another quote by Karl Rahner, one of the top two or three Catholic theologians of the past century. And he said famously that the Christians of the future will either be a mystic or he will not exist at all. So what he was saying, this guy at the very center of this you know, Roman Catholic institution and hierarchy, he was saying that it's not enough just to be an institution, it's not enough to be a, a do-gooding organization, it's not enough to have ethics and to try to do the right thing, that the heart of Christianity is that experience of God where God has touched our lives, where we've touched God and we've known that, and the church is based from that experience of God. We have to be mystics. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ. Christ died and rose again, so there would no, be no possible separation between us and Christ, us and love, us and God. Nothing can separate us. That connection with God is hardwired. So even if you want to get rid of it, you can't. And this is one of the particular joys of, for me, of pastoral ministry and formation work, is that when you ask people the right sorts of questions and you really begin to listen in, each of us can talk about moments a moment, more than one moment, when we felt God's presence, when we've, how we've known God. And even people who say, I don't experience that, do. They talk about wholeness or connection or rightness or peace. We all have that moment of connection. It doesn't always develop for certain reasons. It may not be cast into good soil but it's there. And that's that connection that Christ died to keep with us in our lives. The tether of divine love is always attached. The umbilical cord of the divine mother and us is solid. It keeps feeding us with God's own life. Okay, so I hope I've convinced you that yes, you are a little mystic. <laughs> some sense of the sacred, of connection, of wholeness has touched all of our lives. But you might say to me, oh, but Robert, it was 45 years ago and it lasted 10 seconds and I almost got hit by a bus. <laughs> it's like very small. Jesus says, yeah, I know. It's like the smallest of everything in your life, right? Like the smallest of all seeds, like a mustard seed. But if you take that seed, that experience, and you plant it, it will grow into a shrub and a tree, and the birds will come and nest in it, and you will have bird song in your soul. Small. It's not the big part of our lives. It's these small moments of utterly sacred knowing. We have those. And then you might say, well, that's true, but I'm really too busy to, uh, to plant it or take care of that mustard bush. You know, it's a lot of work. You got to bring water out every day and the dumb thing doesn't grow. And then, but Jesus says, yes, you're right. It does take time. What you don't give time and attention to does not grow. That's just a fact. No relationship, no love grows without time and attention. But he says, you know, it's precious. It's more precious than anything else in your life. It is the precious, most precious thing that that man, he went and he sold everything he had to buy that field. He sold all of his pearls so he could buy that pearl, a very special value. It's worth, in a way, everything. It's worth the sacrifice, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. 
But if you say to Jesus, okay, okay, well, it's small, but it can grow. I get that. That's fine. And if it's really precious, I have to sacrifice for it. Okay, I, yeah, but I'm actually, Jesus, I'm like full of sin. I'm like a self-seeking whatever. Jesus is like, yep, that's true too. But you know what? In the ocean of yourself, you have good fish and you have bad fish. And at the end of time, the angels are going to take that net out of all of you and they're going to throw away the bad fish. The separation is coming. The separation is inevitable. We're all sinners and we're all touched by God. We're all known by God. God has touched all of us and we go on sinning. And the closer you get to God, alas, the more you will know yourself as a sinner. That's what the saints say. So, the point is, Jesus says, the separation will occur. And whether that separation is for you a moment of liberation, a moment of freedom, like, thank God I no longer have that dross in my life, all those bad fish. It can be that way, or it can be like what you thought you were is being destroyed. Right? So how you experience that separation is based on if you're attached to your bad fish or not. Hmm. All right. So Jesus, I'm trying to say today that you have this experience of God in your life. If you take it and you plant it, it will grow. If you work it and knead it through the dough, all your life will be leavened. And it's worth everything. It's very affirming in a way, but it requires of us the planting. It requires of us the kneading. It requires us to buy the field. It requires of us the painful work of letting the angels come into your house and take bad fish or whatever it is and throw it away. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, neither height nor depth, powers, present, things to come, anything else in all creation. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ, but anything will distract us. It's not that we get separate. It's that we get distracted and lost in so many ways. And the world we have made is one that will often not only distract us, but encourage habits in us that make us hostile to the life of that mustard seed, that will scare away those birds that want to sing in our souls. There's a book called The Great De-Churching about the collapse of church attendance in this country. And uh, I want to say, first of all, that it, it's great to see you, and it's... <laughs> And it pleases God that you're here because God does want to give God's self to you in ever new ways. But the reason for the great de-churching is not only the, the, the scandals that have come upon Christianity for the past 2,000 years. It's a joke. 2,000 years. But really the past 40 years of scandals. But more importantly what these sociologists and I think an economist or somebody, they, they figured, they sort of their theory is that what's causing the decline is that we've created a culture in which the purpose of life is to achieve through your work and then to acquire with the fruits of that. So it's about achieving through your job and the fruits and then acquiring things from the fruits of that. And then making sure that our kids are ready to achieve through their work in an ever more cutthroat economic and educational world. They have to be at the top of the top. Therefore, they have to be in travel lacrosse. Therefore, they can't come to church on Sunday. It has to be about achieving in your work and then acquiring stuff. And if that's the religion, 
that's where we find our sense of worth and our dignity as human beings is what we've achieved and what we've acquired just a little bit more than the guy next to us. Then, then church, what is, what is church? Church it might be something pleasant on the side. It might be a ethical reminder. It might be a nice nonprofit to do good in the world. But these authors are suggesting that church can be a community where we discover our dignity because God loves us, God rejoices in us, God gives God's self to us. I mean, God is falling all over God's self to show more and give more and to feed us more. So we go back to the color purple and we do come here this morning to celebrate how God has touched our lives, how God has touched your life maybe that 40 years ago with the bus, or maybe yesterday when something beautiful went pew, or some moment of forgiveness was offered, or some kindness, or some connection, some joy. And when we offer these in church, they become deeper, and they're grounded and strengthened, we give thanks for them and we share them together. God has touched my life recently by suggesting that I not hurry quite so much. And that's real. Again, it's not about what we achieve through our work, but it's about God loving us and everyone. So church is here to celebrate, but also to give God, to celebrate God, to give God, and to strengthen that God kingdom, whatever that is in your life, that place of wholeness and connection and goodness and soul. So for example, this coming year, Lisa's developing a series of pilgrimages to take us to various sites around racial reckoning and our history. And we're doing this not because we're do-gooders. We're not. We're not do-gooders, at least I'm not. But we're doing it because something mysterious has like awoken in us, which is that drawing close to this history, somehow we discover God there and soul and Jesus, and we don't understand why. We're profoundly moved. Megan and Jonathan Lease are just beginning to organize a series of dinners at their farm that you'll be invited to to come and to practice and learn about Sabbath, making space for God in your life, keeping Sabbath. Another thing that's going on, church strengthening the kingdom. And then we have the music program, and we have not only the adult choir, which is going to grow, we're going to have lay people next fall sit here, and we'll have the choir sit there. <laughs> anyway, it's a joke, but it's going to grow, particularly with a, with a children's choir. And I'll, I'll tell you that the first moment that I know in my life was when, when, I, when I, I would say was I was touched by God, was playing clarinet with my music teacher in his basement, and we were playing Mozart. And then we got about a few measures in, and then I didn't exist at all, and then the piece ended, playing this beautiful Mozart duet. And I felt like that pure transcendence when it's so pure you're not even there. Music opens us to God. It's in other ways of strengthening that kingdom in our lives. Nothing will separate us from the love of God in Christ. Anything can and will distract us. Let's plant, let's know what that seed is. Let's plant it and nourish that in church, in our fellowship, in our community. Let's buy that field. Let's make it our own. And let's let the angels Get all that bad fish, put it aside. In Jesus, amen. amen.
now 